So Sarah, let's talk a little bit about how much can we pay people that work in our shop? Yeah, when we think about this, we just have an infinite amount of money we can pay anybody because we're business owners. And so there's just Trevor, cash flowing Trevor, everywhere, right? Is that how Trevor that works? Has an infinite amount of money. Trevor. That's it. There it is. No. No, when we think about this, one of the things that we see as we're walking through financials with dealers is that one of the ways that they get most upside down inside of their dealership and specifically the service department is the fact that they are not utilizing salary caps for their payment of, of their employees. Now, again, I mentioned we're in Kansas City and we have what I may think is maybe the best football team in the NFL. Come at me. We can talk about it later. But we did realize something a few years ago that there's nothing that a half a billion dollars can't get for you. And so we have an incredible quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. Game last night was fantastic, but that's a different topic for another day. But what we know is that with his salary, his half a billion dollars over the next 10 years, because we're paying him so much, there are other people on the team we can't pay as much for because we have a cap of what we can afford as a football team. Now, here's the deal. Inside of your dealership, you have a salary cap too. You just may not realize that it was a cap that you needed to be conscious of. So when we think about what we can afford to pay in our service department, we've broken it down into a pretty easy way. Your labor rate determines what you can pay a technician and management inside of a service department. So again, let's use the example of $100 an hour for a service department labor rate. If we had $100 an hour, we can pay 30% of our labor rate to pay an A-level technician. So that would tell us that we have $30 an hour that we could pay an A-level technician if our labor rate was $100 an hour. We've got 15% of that set aside for management costs. So for us to be able to afford a service manager in our service department, we need three technicians who are at least 85% efficient for us to be able to cost justify a service manager. If we don't have that, we have some other ways that we can take that management cost and help run the service department with that. But don't be like, okay, we've got a technician, maybe a technician and a half. It's time to bring a service manager in. No, that's a terrible idea. We don't love that. We don't love that because you can't cost justify them. We've got 35% of that posted labor rate that's going to our departmental costs. Now, this is paying rent, paying insurance, paying the lights and the utilities for the dealership. This is making sure that when we need a new tool, we have money set aside for that new tool. 35% goes to the departmental costing. And then we expect from every labor dollar produced that 20% of every dollar produced goes into your pocket as an owner, as net profit. Your service department should be an ATM machine throwing off $100 bills all the time. But often the reason that you're so upside down in service is not because you don't have good technicians. Like, listen, we, that's a whole different conversation for a whole different day. But it's because your salary caps are out of line. So how do you figure out what your labor rate should be in order to pay these technicians what they need to be paid? Again, right now, overarchingly, it's not that we don't have a technician problem. I'm a believer right now that there is nobody who really wants to work that's not working in a technical space right now. But the thing is, you are sitting here saying, oh, well, I need an A-level technician and I'm only going to pay him $20 an hour. That, I don't care where you're in the country, that's not going to cut it right now. And so in order to figure out what your post labor rate should be, what we're going to do is we've got to determine how much we have to pay an A-level technician to bring them in. Here's what typically happens on how you determine your posted labor rate. You pick up the phone and you call the dealership down the street and you go, what's your labor rate? And they go, oh, it's $120 an hour. You go, okay, great. And then you call another dealership and you go, what's your labor rate? And they go, oh, it's 125. And you're like, okay, I'm gonna be somewhere in the middle. 121 is where we're gonna be because I wanna be in between 120 and 125. Let's go. Listen, do you know what those dealers are doing to determine their posted labor rate? They're calling you. They're calling you. And so you get into this big circle and we simply call this pooling ignorance because nobody's actually going outside of the industry to figure out what your labor rate should be. That is not a recipe for success. A few years ago, Ford spent $20 million to determine what the labor rate for every single county in the United States should be. $20 million. Okay, let's not reinvent the wheel literally or figuratively here. What I want you to do to figure out what your posted labor rate should be is call the local Ford dealership and say, hey, 
I'm a dealership down the street. I don't compete against you. And I'm just curious, what is your posted labor rate? I want you to be right at where they are, or maybe just a fraction of a hair less from what your local Ford dealership is, because we are still looking for the same thing. They needed to figure out how much it would cost to get good technicians, and that's how they set their labor rate too. So answer the question. On a scale of one to five, are your salary caps in line? Number one is Sarah, I've never thought about this before. I'm still paying my people $12 an hour and I don't understand why they're so upset with me. And five is Sarah, I've got this dialed in. I'm paying 30% or less for my technician pay. And I've got making sure my management costs, my departmental costing and my net profit as an owner is coming out of every single labor dollar produced. Put that rating down one to five. 